This video is 10 minutes of nonstop posing tips for men. So if you're a wedding or portrait photographer, stick around, it's gonna be worth your while. My name is Pai, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and slrlounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up friends? My name is Pai. Welcome to Adorama TV. This video is for my wedding and portrait photographers because look, nine out of 10 clients that stand in front of your lens are not going to know how to pose. So understanding posing basics is absolutely huge. So let's get straight into this. I'm gonna introduce my friend. This is Derek. He's my homie. He actually modeled for me way back, like seven years ago. Mm -hmm. Now he's an elite fitness trainer and all this stuff. He just hopped into his outfit to help us out here. So thank you, my friend. We'll link him up so you guys can give him a follow. And uh, yeah, this is designed to look like groom and groomsman type shots. So let's go ahead and start with worst case scenario. I'm gonna scooch you in just this way a second. And we're gonna focus here specifically on just pose, okay? So we're gonna start with kind of this worst case, which we often kind of, <laughs> not that, it's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> just stand like straight, flat-footed, kind of let the hands, there you go. That is our typical worst case scenario that we see at weddings. Very common, like people just kind of stand. Sometimes even you'll find groom and groomsmen with their toes kind of going in. So what we're gonna do is work now to correct the entire posture, give you tips along the way in terms of shooting and everything. Let's jump in. Now, I have developed a system for posing that I call foundation posing, and I call it that because it always begins with the feet. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with the feet. So whenever we are posing, what we want to really think is body language, okay? What we're trying to create is body language that's authentic and it also looks good. So if you think about what goes wrong in a pose, it has to do with what the pose is communicating, right? So toes in, we see this in a couple instances. One, people lack confidence and sometimes their toes go in. Two, children, what does it make them look like they have to do? Derek? Gotta go pee. Yeah, you gotta go pee. Okay, so this is the kind of body language we do when we're kind of like, gotta go to the bathroom. So what we wanna do instead, working from the feet, is I wanna guide my groom and groomsmen to go toes pointed out. They're always gonna ask, how far should the feet go? And what we're gonna say is, don't do this. This looks like you're riding a horse, right? Again, body language, don't do this because this looks, again, kind of uncomfortable. So what we want is about shoulder width apart. I'm gonna take shots through this sequence as we go so you can kind of see these corrections being made. So now, Derek, go ahead and go toes kind of facing out a little bit, shoulder width apart. And let's go right there, let everything else kind of hang. And here we are. So we already have a good improvement here. Now, moving our way up to the hip. What I want now is for Derek's posture to kind of get comfortable. Guys can get away with, you know, standing straight up. It kind of makes someone look blocky though. So what I like to do is actually have my guys lean from one hip to the other, okay? So this is referred to as a contrapposto stance. If you want the official art school Italian term, at least as far as I remember. I kind of didn't do so well in art school, so. I'm sure you did great. No, my, my teacher told me to quit, like legit. <laughs> anyway. Let's get back she to the video. <laughs> he. Okay, so <laughs> he's gonna go onto one hip. Uh, whatever one you're more comfortable with, but that's gonna give you a little bit more of a natural kind of stance. Um, and it's gonna look a little more comfortable. So Derek's still going to let the hands kind of hang, which is still not great. But you can see how the lean on the hip does give us a bit more of a, a relaxed kind of feel. All right, so we've got the feet. We've moved our way up to the hips and we had two tips on the feet. One was toes out. Two was shoulder width apart. Three is our hips lean, right? Let's go on to four, the hands. The hands are a big thing, right? Yeah, what do I do with my hands? Will Ferrell said it best, the classic line. Okay, so the thing with the hands is whenever they're just kind of at the sides like you saw in that shot earlier and like Derek's doing now, it looks unnatural. And that's typically because we don't usually stand like this. Like usually we're gonna do something, we're gonna put hands at rest or we're gonna be doing something with our hands. So what I want you to do is give the hands a sense of purpose. Now watch. Derek, bring your hand up to your head like this. That doesn't quite, well, if he's touch, dude, you're doing the model thing, man. You got <laughs> okay, this doesn't really make sense until you add the prop piece into it, and now he's actually making a phone call, right? So we wanna think whatever the hands are doing, 
it needs to make sense in terms of the, thanks for making that call, for the body language that we're communicating. Oftentimes, yeah, oftentimes I see models like bring their hands to the belly, but what do we, we bring our hands to the belly typically when we're hungry, hungry stomach hurts, oh man, I'm getting hungry. Yeah. So you're gonna kind of communicate that in a photograph, right? So usually if you're gonna bring the hands onto the chest or the body, it's gonna be the lapel. So you can bring the hands up the lapel. You can kind of put one hand in the pocket. You know what the safest thing is here? Safest thing is one hand at rest, one hand in the pocket. As long as you have one hand kind of hanging at rest in a pocket, the other hand can just do its thing. Now, with that improvement, let's go ahead and take a shot. We are four steps into this. Derek, the master of posing automatically that much better. Now, let's go on to point five. I don't know how many points are gonna be. I promised you 10 minutes of tips, so that's what we're doing. The spine. The spine is a big deal. In fact, Derek, why don't you turn so you kind of give them your profile? And Derek loves it when I put my hands on him, so I'm just gonna do that more. Um, the spine, we wanna make sure that there's no, well, we want curves in certain places, specifically the lumbar spine, the lower spine, you want kind of a curve and a smiley face in, but the thoracic and cervical spines, we want to be straightened out, okay? So what you're gonna say to your client is imagine a string pulling you up from the top of your head. This is gonna straighten up the shoulders. Now, if you turn back to the camera, go ahead and turn back. Sometimes this can make someone look like, you know, they're kind of uncomfortable because they're like fully straightened up. So just say, relax the shoulders a bit. You don't need to go too crazy with it. It'll look like you got to stick somewhere. Right. I can't say it, you know, we got to keep it, got to keep this friendly. Okay, so string pulling up and now we have that. Okay, we're doing solid. In fact, if I actually take this shot, you can start to see that we're really getting to a great place right now. You're looking good, brother. I mean, even like when we started with that crappy pose, you still look good, but that's, that's on you. That's, that's on you. That's not on me. That's, you're the, you're the that's your mama. You're that's your mama. What I'm doing I'm now best. is on me. I'm best. I have beautiful parents. But. Okay. So now, <laughs> go, go right back to here where we were a second ago. There we go. I want you guys to think we're on to kind of point six now and think neck, right? Neck and jawline. Derek is going to be... Derek is lean, he's a fitness trainer. So I don't have to worry about jawline too much, but on almost everybody that I photograph, I'm gonna have them extend their neck forward just a little bit. In fact, on Derek, it'll still look great. It's gonna further define the jawline. The next thing that we're gonna do, so point seven, is I'm gonna bring his chin kind of towards the light. But here's the thing, I'm gonna do one thing before that. So number seven, we're gonna angle the body away from the light. Number eight, we're gonna bring the chin back to the light. Now what this does is it creates like a nice Rembrandt pattern on the face. It puts his chest and body into the shadow, which looks great anytime you wanna shoot something that's more dramatic or when you want to lean out a subject, this is gonna be ideal, okay? Putting part of the body in the highlight and the majority into the shadow. So Derek's stance looks fantastic. Okay, let's put it all together. All right, now eyes, let's have you come right into the camera. And I'm gonna go do this. We're gonna go from right here. Perfect. Now, this pose already looks fantastic. You'll notice that I'm shooting from hip height, right? Okay, the last thing that I'm gonna do, well, I'm gonna go 0 0.9, then we're gonna go number 10. Derek, scoot in a little bit this way so I can kind of get the background filled. Notice that if I'm up here, okay, if I'm up here shooting kind of a shot of Derek, I'm gonna try and get close to this wall, okay? From this higher angle, you can already tell that his legs are actually getting shorter, okay? From the mid angle, it'll look like his legs are getting a bit longer. If we wanna continue that effect, you're gonna go to a semi-wide angle, 28, 35-ish, or even a 50 is gonna be okay, but what you wanna do is actually lower the camera down. You don't need to go all the way down to the ground, but we need to go enough that we start to kind of elongate the legs. So Derek, because this wall's here, scoot back just a little bit. And maybe for this one, go back towards the wall so I get a little more space. So I'm gonna come down to right here. And now, Derek's gonna put all that together, straighten up the jacket just a bit. There you go. Rotate the body a little bit more, there. There it is. Dude, that's solid. There it is, okay. I'm gonna show you the before versus the after. There's the after. Killed it. This is our first shot, last shot. Wow. I went from, uh, well, I turned into Jason Statham there. I looked like uh, Forrest <laughs> Gump at first. 
<laughs> you look good either way. But that's what I want you all to do is to kind of work through the serious steps. Again, thick foundation, kind of work your way up. Now, once you have your subject there, don't stop, okay? This is where I get to kind of the last little tip that I want to give. This is when you want to put your subject a bit into action. So if he were my groom or groomsman, I want to kind of capture some details. I'm going to have Derek stand just a little bit forward. Same thing, kind of angling towards this side there. Now, what I'm going to do is start up here and I'm going to crop right at the thigh and I'm going to work through a little sequence of images. You guys can kind of see Derek look right into the camera from right there. I love that. Give me a smile. Fantastic. Now, okay, look out towards this side. I'm going to get in a little bit closer. Now bring it back to the camera. Give me that smile again. Now go ahead and make like you're adjusting the tie. So actually put the hands into action. There it is. Look into the camera while you do that. I'm going to come back just a bit, do one more time. Notice that when I crop, I want to crop either at the thighs Usually I don't go down to the calves. I usually go to the thighs and I want to make sure that I can see gap between the thighs so I can see form, right? Otherwise, I'm going to go above the hips. I don't want to go at the hips. Generally, we want to move away from cropping at points of the body where we're widening out in the frame. It's not very flattering. So instead, crop at narrowing points. And kind of what we did was we kind of went in tight or wide. And now I can even go in tighter. So as he's adjusting the tie, I'm actually going to go in even closer bring a, a little shot right in the details, bring up both hands to it and kind of look down just a bit like you're actually adjusting. There it is right there. Okay. Bring it out like you're adjusting a cuff link, maybe some of the jewelry. I'm going to get some shots right here. Hold it kind of still. Let me get a kind of shot of that ring. That's kind of a cool, it's not a wedding ring, but that's cool. We can, we can pretend it is. Okay. So I'm just going to work in and out kind of photographing different details once we're here but don't just kind of take that standard shot and move on. This is the entire sequence that I would do getting all the details. And it doesn't matter if it's a wedding or just a portrait session. I want to work through and tell the complete story. You're going to do that by moving, getting in tight, going back wide and getting all the different angles and crafting the story with the different elements. So I think we might've gone just a bit over 10 minutes in case we did. You're welcome. Also, we're going to link up Derek so you guys can give him a follow as well. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. If you did, we'd love for you all to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. And if you like, turn on notifications. So all the awesome Adorama creators, well, when their videos are uploaded, you're actually notified. Meantime, see you guys next time. Peace.